Ja, der Winter hat ein bisschen Einzug gehalten in Leverkusen und langsam werden die Temperaturen äh, deutlich niedriger. Höher werden die Temperaturen natürlich jetzt im Liga-Alltag und wir haben gedacht, äh, umso besser, dass wir uns auch hier drin ein bisschen aufwärmen und gemeinsam mal wieder auf einen Kaffee gehen. Heute bei mir Trey McBride. Hey guys, how you going? Nice to see you. Um, to start off this small interview, uh, there's an important question for myself as a commentator. Some people still refer to you as Walter yeah. due to your dad. Do you prefer Trey or Walter? Uh, it really doesn't make a difference for me in my uh, professional career. As a child, it made a big difference because kids would call me Wally or, you know, say my name was old. But I like hearing my name as a pro now because it's like I'm paying homage to him because You know, he's the one that really helped me get to this point in my career. So every time I score a basket or the announcers come on, it, it still gives me chills on my arm because it's like Vita McBride. And I'm like, oh, that that's really cool. My dad, me. So it's just like a little legacy thing I like. Yeah, this legacy and this family impact yeah. is pretty huge uh, on you and mm -hmm. on your family as a whole. Yeah. Um, how has your dad impacted your career decisions and your whole career to this point? Well, I typically don't like to make any type of decision without him um, or my mom for that matter. Um, yeah, he's just been a huge influence on me as a player. Um, just getting to this point, telling me to stay patient because it's not easy for a young American coming out of college trying to get to Germany. Um, everyone's trajectory is a little different and his was different and he just, you know, kept me stable, kept me balanced and just really talked me through the entire process. The family roots are not only uh, seen in your career, it's also on your uh, little brother. Yeah. Um, I have a little brother myself okay. and um, I know there's always a kind of tension uh, in siblings. So seeing him on the New York Knicks now, seeing him in the NBA, is it more like uh, proud or is it more oh. like of a little tip? I'm, I'm his biggest fan, also his biggest hater, but <laughs> you know, that's just what being a big brother is. Um, yeah, I'm, I couldn't be more proud of him as a big brother, to be honest with you. Uh, we grew up playing the game together every day in the backyard. It's really cool to see like the moves we did as children um, at the highest level, see him do the exact same thing that he's been doing for 10, 11 years. Um, but you know, now it's not as intense as you would think. Now it's more like if we were to play one-on-one -on -one or any type of competition game, uh, it's like, a, it's almost like a joke. Like we, we end up laughing more times than not. And we, really don't even finish the game because it really doesn't matter because we accomplished our number one goal, which was to play professional basketball. I've also seen on Instagram that he visited you and you played down under. Yeah. Um, uh, how is your connection right now? I know it's difficult because of the season schedule, yeah. but uh, how do you keep in touch? Typically, I talk to everyone in my family every week, whether it's through Snapchat, Instagram or Twitter DMs, phone calls. So I talk to him through Twitter probably every day just through DMs and stuff, talk to my sister every day on Snapchat. I'll call my mom and dad, if not every day, every other day. So my whole bond and connection with my entire family is really tight. I mean, uh, schedule on the one hand, but also uh, the time difference is a huge part. So it's not often for you. Uh, I would think that you can watch all the games, but <laughs> NBA, NBA is still pretty huge in Germany yeah. and basketball is on the rise in Germany. Um, do you still uh, try to like keep on highlights on your brother? Well, I do more watching of the EuroLeague now, but I have the NBA league pass, yeah. so I can pretty much go and watch his games anytime. Um, but yeah, I still do the highlights or just check the Instagram reel to see if he got in or not. And if he doesn't, it's okay. I'll still maybe tune in or watch the Lakers or something. Uh, you um, talked about EuroLeague for a second there. Uh, that's a pretty uh, good uh, point to get over on your own career. Um, you played in the US, you played in uh, Australia, and you played in several countries in Europe. Yeah. How is the game different seen worldwide? <sighs> It's going to be a long-winded answer, but, you know, I can keep it short. It's really, it's amazing how, like, people interpret the game differently. So, like, Serbia, it's very physical. They play super, super hard. Um, it's a little more traditional how the game is meant to be played. Germany is very similar to Serbia. Um, maybe not as great athletes, but still really physical. Um, great shooters everywhere. Super fundamentally sound. Australia, 
they're a little more athletic and they like to play the game more up and down. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Australian football, but their sport is like a marathon. It's like literally running the entire field all game. And in some instances, that's how the basketball games feel. <laughs> um, and then in the US, it's kind of a mixture between Europe and Australia, just depending on what state you come from or, or what program you go to. So it's really cool to just see how it's interpreted differently. I know Hansi has a pretty strict opinion on this, but uh, do you prefer American or European basketball style? As I've gotten older and I've spent more time here in Europe, I've come to love the European style a lot more. Also, uh, watching or just play? Both. Ah, okay. Both, nice. yeah. Yeah, uh, I already talked about it. You had several countries in Europe. I mean, Europe, um, uh, in my experience for uh, many US citizens, is... Uh, normally approached as a whole and when they come here they're a little shocked that uh, yeah. the cultures are so different yeah. uh, did you have the same experience after living in several countries no not really my dad i think prepared me pretty well for it, as well as my mom she pretty much told me like you're gonna go to this country and they'll have mcdonald's but the burgers might not taste like the burgers <laughs> back home and so knowing that being told that from the time you're nine ten years old to the time I'm, I think I went pro at 22 or 23. Um, so just hearing that on a daily basis, I think it prepared me pretty well. My dad had such a good time in Europe and my, both my parents had such a great time in Europe that they told me all the good experiences, all the people they met. So I really looked forward to embracing, you know, new people, new places, new foods, new things. Your dad played in Europe, but he also played a long time in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, was it ever in your career uh, like an idea to play in Germany or just the opportunity that came across? Yeah, I have pretty much planned on playing in Germany since the time I can remember. Because um, I was born here yeah. in Landstein near Koblenz, for those that don't know. Um, and the difference between me and Miles was he always said he wanted to play in the NBA. I had NBA dreams too, but I always said I wanted to play in Germany like my dad. I wanted to be able to see the hospital I was born in, mm. see the place I was actually born in, um, because most people in the States don't get a chance to travel outside of their own city, let alone the other side of the world. So that was just one really big goal of mine. So you was born here, but also uh, you uh, now play your second year in Germany. Um, what do you like about this country? Why do you uh, think for yourself that uh, a part of you is rooted here? Well, I think the reason I love playing here is aside from just the, the on court, like it's really good basketball. I really enjoy the fact like Leverkusen has diehard fans. Um, that's one thing I've always loved about the European game. Like the fandom is unreal. People like grow up watching a single team their entire life, no matter what player they get they're gonna support the team when that player's there or when he leaves. So I really appreciate like the fans um, and how much they put into supporting a team. Um, so for me, that's like my favorite thing about playing here. Yeah, uh, like you said, I remember uh, the quote, uh, the famous quote from Nikola Jokic who said, mm -hmm. uh, I played in Serbia, brother, yeah. uh, so why, why do I care? Yeah. And uh, this, this cultural experience, uh, does it also impact the players much more than uh, some would think? American players or just all, everybody? On players the in general, I think. I think it does, um, especially if you're not used to it. Um, I was blessed to have played at a high school that had like pretty crazy fans, a college that had pretty crazy fans. Um, and then I wanted, like, I want that pressure, I would say. Um, and it makes me more excited. Uh, not because I want to let anyone down. It's more just like, wow, like I'm playing on, you know, some places don't have a hard floor. Some places don't have the way our gym is set up, don't have the, the lights mm -hmm. making the floor the center of the, of the point of view, like the center of the game. Like, a lot of places don't have that. And so that really just fires me up because I'm like, man, like we're the main event. All eyes are on us. Some people, you know, may get a little shy because they've never played in an arena, let alone that many people all, all at once. Um, so I think it does affect a few people. But after three, four games, I mean, you should get used to it. It's pretty deafening. Like you don't really hear anything. This shyness you talked about, is this also something you can help players with since you have maybe a lot more experience than some other guys? Yeah, it, 
it comes down, I'm a big believer in just routine, routine, routine. And I have a pregame routine. I'm, I'm sure Neos has seen me at every home game. Like I start out with my ball handling, yeah. go into the really fundamental stuff. I like to start, you know, at the base of how I learned to play the game because that's really all it is. All the other stuff, you know, really doesn't matter. Um, I like to stay fundamentally sound because I can always rely on those fundamentals. And if I feel, I feel like if I do those really well, how can I really mess up in the game? So my advice to guys that do struggle playing in big moments like that, just rely on your, your, you know, your training that you've done your entire life. Don't think about missing a shot. Don't think about disappointing anyone because, you know, I would, I feel like I hate to lose more than a fan hates to lose, you know, like this is my job. You know, I'm the one that loses sleep over a loss. Um, you know, I love the fact that they're so engaged and involved, but at the end of the day, this is my career and the only person I feel like I can let down is myself. So, okay. yeah. Yeah, I've uh, seen your pregame routine also a few yeah. times and uh, I also have seen that on the one hand you're uh, like always one of the first persons on the floor yeah. and always like a little bit in your own tunnel with your own music. So is this something that characterizes you as a person and a player as well? Yeah, again, my father told me focus, focus, focus because, you know, regardless of how you look at this level of play, um, like Pro B basketball, it's really good basketball. Um, guys in the league overall are kind of young, but they're learning mm. and they play hard and they do the right things and they do everything really well. And so if you're, if you're not locked in going into every single game and you're not focused, like you're going to get exposed. And I know a lot of Americans that have, that have struggled going into um, their first or second year playing here because they think they can just come over and do whatever they want. And it's really, it's really not that. So I try to just make sure I'm as focused as possible. Um, some people don't like to focus as much as I do. I personally need to. Um, that's what helps me. So I do what helps me. I think the the level of competition is also like a result of uh, rising basketball worldwide mm -hmm. and also especially in Germany because you see these guys in Pro B or Pro A 15, 16, 17 years old and they're coming up so strong yeah. already. Are you also sometimes surprised how good these young kids are? Yeah, there was a kid at Vesta last year I played. He's, I think, with the BBL team now. I can't remember his name, but I think he was 17 years old. I, he was a seven footer. Yeah. Um, At Itzaho, we had a 16-year-old that was really, really talented. And I'm 20, at the time I was 25 playing these guys, I'm like, oh, well, you know, not now, but five, six years from now, these guys are going to be, who knows, the face of German basketball. Yeah, I think I know who you mean. I think you mean Johan Grünlo. Yeah. Yeah, because I already interviewed him okay. when he was already in JBL and the younger yeah. competition. And I was also amazed by how professionally he already was. Yeah. He was like, like you said, 15, 16, 17, already seven foot tall. Yeah. But he, he did an interview like he did it a thousand times. And now you see him in BBL. I think it's. Uh, also on a rising level with like social media or mm -hmm. something like that it's kind of amazing to see that these guys can handle this pressure um, we talked about it a little bit now you guys have also a kind of pressure um, do you feel this coming at you too uh, on a different level than like three four years ago so do, do you mean like individually do i feel more pressure from just playing here with like fans like that are diehard yeah yeah right fans social media and also media oh, in itself. um no not really i really tend to focus on just the basketball like i focus on the 10 11 guys in the locker room um i really focus on not disappointing myself not disappointing my teammates or my coach um with social media people are going to say whatever they want mm -hmm. like i can't control what somebody tweets or says on Shonen Duncan or Instagram, like I really can't. So all I can do is play as hard as I possibly can, ask for support when we're down, um, when we're winning, celebrate with us. But yeah, I don't, I don't feel any pressure with that. Let's look uh, back a little bit on Leverkusen. Uh, you talked about it as a city and the diehard fans. 
Um, we are in an area of Germany that is so metropolitan, mm -hmm. so many great cities uh, next to each other. And Leverkusen is, in relation to that, kind of small. What still stands out to you on this city and especially this franchise? Okay, yeah, I think the fact that it's a sports city. Um, I also come from a sports city yeah. in Cincinnati. So it's very nice to see like, not a comparison, but a real similarity in You know, I grew up with a team in a city that had three major sports teams, I believe. Um, here, I know of just two, which is us and the, the, the soccer team. And everyone is supporting them. Um, so it's really cool. So that's one thing that really stands out. Um, the other thing is just how close we are to Cologne, yeah. um, which is really nice. But outside of that, it's really just the fact that like it's a sports town. When you came to Germany and you already said uh, you always wanted to play here, was Leverkusen always a name that rang a bell with you? Again, with my dad, he he's actually really good friends with Kennard, is it Johnson, I believe? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was one of his best friends over here. Um, he brought up Leverkusen, you know, and as a child, you know, I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio. Like, I don't know anything other than Bayern and Alba. So you say Leverkusen at the time, I wasn't really on the internet like that, so I wasn't gonna Google who they were. So like I would go in one ear and out the other as I've gotten older um, and really looked into the history of, you know, not just German sports clubs, but Serbian clubs, Greek clubs. Um, I've figured out, you know, the major clubs, um, the clubs that have, that might be on the lower levels, but have a lot of history. Um, and, you know, I just did my homework really as I've gotten older, so. To answer your question, not really, but as I got an order, yeah, they yeah, did. Um, also, the history of the club is one thing, but also the history of German basketball is another part. You have a huge figure of German basketball as your coach. Yeah. Um, he has seen nearly everything, <laughs> won major trophies, also with Leverkusen. So uh, what is special about him that is maybe different to other coaches? His he oozes confidence not in himself but in every single person on our team and i really admire that in a coach um i've had coaches where guys make mistakes they lose a little little bit of confidence in him in the player and they shorten the roster to, or the bench to six or seven guy rotation hansi still plays 10 guys and i believe that is really amazing because he believes that every single person can contribute You know, he doesn't need the 25 points every night. He doesn't need the triple-double. He wants balance, and he believes we can achieve that. Um, so it, we've shown glimpses of it, but we're still figuring out how to do it. But that's probably the one thing I really admire. This confidence is uh, also a huge part in the situation we're now in, because uh, first time that we have uh, sec uh, multiple losses. Um, Is your confidence shaken at all by that, or you're still in the process, like you said? I think it does, you know, you do lose a little bit. The thing is not to lose, you know, all of it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's understandable. You drop two, you know the expectations. Like, yeah, you're gonna feel bad. Um, but at the end of the day, you still have to show up and you still have to play hard. It's not like, you know, we're saying, oh man, we've lost a few games, the season's over let's pack it up and that's it like we still have an entire five more months of basketball to play um i don't know any type of championship that's ever been won in november let alone december so we're playing for may like that's when it really really means something and so with that you know perspective i don't see how you can really lose a lot of confidence Yeah, like you said, the championships are not won in the beginning of the season, yeah. so we're still at the start of the yeah. season. Um, what impressed you the most with these new guys and the a new roster that came together? No egos, like zero egos. I'm sure you guys have spoken with everybody on the team. Um, just a great group of guys. Um, yeah, it's really special when you have a team that nobody feels like they have to be Superman. Everyone feels like they can contribute. There's no awkwardness or any type of tension in the locker room. Um, it's really everybody enjoys playing with each other. They play for each other. And it's just really special to have that. It doesn't happen often. This is like one of the few times over my entire 
sports career, like okay. football, basketball, soccer, like all of it, where I've played on a team where every single person is just so, I don't want to say mellow, but just such a good human, you know what I mean? And it just, it's really enjoyable. So it's also the reason why many guys, if they have a kind of off night, uh, the next game, they still coming out strong yeah. and never lose this focus on their own shot and yeah. their uh, uh, yeah contribution to the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you look at this team as a whole now, um, you say there's no egos, there's uh, no one that steps above anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, what's on the tactical and the playing level the most important focus for you guys right now? Right now it's just figuring out how to bring ourselves together. So it's one thing for five guys to be on the floor, right? It's another to figure out, okay, who's going to have the hot hand tonight. Like you, you don't go into a game knowing, okay, CJ's going to go for 20, Marco's going to go for 18. Like you don't know that. Um, so it may take a little bit of time to figure out. And throughout the course of the game, you start, those things start to open up. Now, our job as a team is to figure out those things early and very quickly. Um, and it's not easy. Um, realistically, we're still kind of a young team. Um, so it's just a lot of learning that we have to do, um, figuring out individual, our individual game as well as, you know, how that game is going to go and executing Hansi's plan and then, you know, just carrying it out. And that's really the biggest thing. So it's just coming together and, you know, that's really what it is. To round this off, uh, I want to look back a little bit on your heritage. You you talked about Cincinnati and you talked about your football come up. Um, football is also starting to grow in Germany yeah. a little bit. Uh, how does this come across to you? Ah, it's cool. I'm a basketball player. <laughs> I don't I don't pay attention to American football. Okay. Maybe college football, but I really <clears throat> when it's basketball season, like I I'm all in on watching basketball, whether it's You know, college basketball, sometimes high school basketball, usually EuroLeague or the NBA. Like my girlfriend's sick of it. Um, <laughs> she probably wouldn't mind watching something other than basketball, but I'm all in on basketball right now. And uh, basketball wise, how far are the New York Knicks going to go this season with your brother? They'll be a playoff team. Okay. Um, where? I mean, they're sealing Eastern Conference Finals. Like, and then once they get there, it's up to them to see how far they really can go. But I, there's no reason they can't be an Eastern Conference Finals team. Um, they've started out slow too. And the New York media crucified a lot of guys. Uh, it's always like that. Yeah, so you know, <laughs> you, you just got to keep playing. So they're going through some things. Uh, I think they just won their last game against Charlotte for the in-season tournament. Um, so hopefully we get a our family gets a nice little bonus. Yeah, what is this? Miles, say? You know, <laughs> would be it would be a perfect end to see the season uh, to make bright yeah, the finals. Yeah, you know, it'd be great. It'd be really great. Um, but you just you know you got to take it day by day. But you know, I know their eyes are not championship or bust, but definitely a playoff team, and that's all you can ask for. I think that's a good way to round it up. Thank you so much for this interview. Really enjoyed talking to you Likewise. and hope uh, to see uh, the expectation match matching the results at yeah, the end of the season. Of course, of course. Ja, und euch nochmal danke fürs Einschalten. Ich hoffe, es hat euch ein bisschen Spaß wieder mal gemacht, Trey ein bisschen besser kennenzulernen. Wir schauen natürlich darauf, dass wir in den kommenden Wochen ein bisschen mehr noch für euch parat haben. Schaut auf unseren Social Media Kanälen vorbei und kommt natürlich gerne in die Halle für die nächsten Heimspiele der Bayer Giants Leverkusen in der Ostermann Arena. Bis dann und schöne Weihnachtstage euch. Tschüss.